Jamie Pilgrim. We're back in the kitchen where I'm going to teach you how I make my blackberry jam. All right, so we're just going to start here with the blackberries. And again, I'm going to show you the size of these. Aren't those beautiful? If you want to keep the seeds in, then just run it through the sieve and leave the seeds in. I, however, like to remove as many of the seeds as possible. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. We're going to start by washing the jars. We're going to get the old ball labels off of here. They come off really easily. That's the nice thing about the ball labels. They do come off easily. You can even make your own if you like. Check for any cracks or breaks. Now's your time to do that, making sure that you're going to have a good seal. I just rinse the jar well, and now I'm going to take it over. It's not sterile yet. It's just clean. It's clean from the debris from storage in the garage. So we're going to pop this over into a boiling water bath and keep them hot. Because remember, hot food, hot jars. Cold packing is cold food, cold jars. So we could bring these to room temperature if we were cold packing them for, like, say, green beans. But if we're going to hot pack them, like for jam, we've got to go ahead and get these uh, hot. They may be tempered glass, but these should be heated to about the same temperature of the jam. Okay, now I have washed the lids and inspected them well, separating them. And the best way to do it is to turn them up every other one, just like this, okay? Every other one. And that will keep them from sticking together. All right, we're going to turn the heat on very low, and then we're going to bring this up to just a low simmer, and we're going to shut it back off again, okay? That will be hot enough, just some really hot water, to get these soaking for just a few minutes. About 10, 15 minutes will do it. Jars are in the pressure canner, um, and you can put them even in like a big 16-quart pot if you've got it. And I always put in extra jars. We're going to turn this on. We're going to let the steam fill these up. I put these all in here upside down so that the steam, you can see I'm starting to fill up with steam here as the water gets hot. Just in hot, very hot, soapy water, making sure that there's no seeds or anything in here from last time. Okay, we're just going to undo the knob here. We're going to need it in just a minute. We're going to take out our kitchen piece here. Now's a good time to wash in here. Oil it, oil your machine, do whatever you have to do. Remember, for me, this is the start of the canning season for jams and jellies. And, um, just make sure you get it all clean really well. You're thinking, oh, none of this is going to touch the jam. It's going to come out of here. Well, yes, that's true, but still, germs crawl around. So you might as well just, again, you can't be perfectly sterile. Um, I want people to understand this. If the world were perfectly sterile, we'd all be dead, all right? We, don't, we can't live without some germs. Some things help us digest food. Now next, I'm gonna show you how to use your food strainer so that we can get the seeds, or most of the seeds, out of the blackberries. Now I want to warn you, I ruined one of these about three or four years ago because I thought that I could run the pulp of my raspberries and blackberry seeds back through the strainer twice because I just felt like there was too much pulp left behind using this and uh, I got all the seeds uh, smashed in here and it buckled this and it broke it at the seam. So this uh, is only about three years old. So check your equipment, make sure everything is in good working order. So let's go ahead and put this together. You're gonna take the short bit, I call the short bit. Turn this up right, because our fruit's gonna go into the food tray. And you wanna make sure that you fill this latch in. Turning the bolt, there we go ahead, and we're going to lock it in. Check it, always check it. Just give it a little tug, make sure that it doesn't twist back and forth. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to put on the long unicorn horn there, and then this piece goes on next, and you can see like the little, little divots here, they fit right in there the ring goes on just like this and just finger tighten the next piece to go on is this piece here and this will splatter so remember do not use a good towel for this and this just slips through the hole right here and right over the top just like that right there and you can see right through here to see that it's working what I like about this new one, as you can see, and make sure that it's not busting and bulging out. 
and then you'll want to set this about right here. Now, if you can set the bowl up a little bit, that is awesome. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use a bowl. I'm going to set my bowl inside of another cereal bowl here. Let's make, and that will raise that up quite a bit, see? And I mean, you could raise it up even higher if you want to, but that will really help the splattering. It doesn't matter if that tilts a little bit. That's fine. This one just has the little hand grip on it so you can push things through. Remember, you're going to put this on a low setting. This will turn. That is perfectly normal. We're going to inspect the fruit as it goes in. Making sure we don't have any leaves or anything. It's going to sit inside. And when I get some fruit that I think isn't worthy of making into jam, then I'll toss it into that bowl there. I mean, these were just beautiful blackberries. Look at those. I'm just taking my time, making sure there's no spiders or anything like that on here. I don't want any little critters. No little critters are welcome in my jam. All right, ready? There we go. Remember, this is my second pickings. Here it comes. Look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. So as it goes down into the chamber here, okay, comes here. You can see it through the little clear plastic lid here. And here's the juice coming out here. And then right here is the seeds and the pulp coming out here. Yeah, that's interesting looking. Sorry, that's just the way that it is. All right, so be sure and have something sitting here and this will splatter. My, my suggestion is to have something sitting up high like this to catch it. So let's go ahead and finish this batch. Again, we're just gonna push it through gently. Watch that it's coming out. There it's coming. See if we can get you to focus. There we go. There it's coming out. Look how rich these blackberries are. And this is why I said do not use good towels for this, okay? Bad idea. And do not run this stuff here. Do not run it back through the strainer. Like I said, I busted the seam on my strainer trying to do that once. Just pitch it, okay? Pitch it or give it to the animals outside. Bug. No bugs are welcome. Okay, no spot. Bug with a fly. No bugs are welcome. And yes, this does um, come right off. Now we get it going. We can start going a little faster, inspecting the fruit as we put it down in there. Again, when canning season starts, I always know when canning season starts for me. Uh, I know people say, oh, Jane, you can year round. Yeah, I do, but I tell you, there is one or two months there that I put my canner away. I'm forcing myself to do that, so then that way I will get other things accomplished. Sometimes you just have to. Because, I mean, I just really, really love to can. I absolutely love it. We're about halfway there. Okay, when I get this done, we will be right back. I hope these videos are helping you. I really do. Yes, the KitchenAid is an investment. There are other ways to do it. The flatter on me now. Ah, this is why you don't wear white. Remember, this is my second picking. I got some in the freezer that I flash froze. So I would have some for some pies. For some blackberry cobbler. You can delete it with a little bit of water. I'm just using bottled water here. You can get this to run through. There you go. You can pour in a little bit of this organic grape juice. It won't change the flavor really at all. Just a little bit. It takes about a quarter of a cup. See that? And then there we have it. Now that's just a little tip that I have. Like I said, you can either use the clean water or you can use some sort of blackberry juice or grape juice, it doesn't matter. If I had the blackberry juice, trust me, I would've used the blackberry juice. 
but um, this is 100% grape juice, and um, and so then I used it. You don't have to do that. You don't have to add anything to it, but this was just me cleaning the machine out from all the seeds and getting it to come out. That way, it makes it a lot easier for me to clean my machine. But you can totally uh, skip that last step. Now, I'm going to get a little tasty. So you can grab a clean spoon, give it a stir, because the heavy pulp will set up to the bottom. This is without sugar or anything in it. Mmm. That is so good. Now, let's say you're running a little short for a recipe. Again, you can thin it down with a little bit of some blackberry juice from the store if you have to, if you're short for the recipe. I mean, of course I want to taste test it. Remember, clean spoon. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it sets up or not. I'm going to water bath can it. Um, if it doesn't set up, just label it syrup. That's all you have to do. I'm going to give this about, um, about a quarter inch head space. Okay, we're just going to clean off the rims here. This is very hot. Reach in, get a lid. Make sure there's only one lid on here. Put on the screw band. There we go. Hot, hot, hot. Put on the screw band. Finger tight. Okay, so jams get processed for 10 minutes and jellies get processed for 5 minutes. So I'm going to process this in a water bath. Make sure it's really good and rolling before you account it. I'm just going to put the lid on just how I've got it now so the steam can come in. This means no weights will go on here at all. This is my sink after a blackberry jam session. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of jam on some biscuits. This hasn't even set up yet. It looks great. I'm going to give you a bite first. So this other half is off to John. Be sure and hit that subscribe button. Be sure and stay tuned because we have some syrup that we're going to be making with the rest of the blackberry juice. And hopefully I'll get some actual blackberry juice made with the other uh, picking or two of the blackberries this week. They're, they're coming on and ripening in this heat. They're ripening faster than I can pick them. I mean, I'm putting them in the freezer. And this is just off one plant. And I think I've probably gotten an equivalent to probably two and a half gallons so far off just two pickings. Okay, here we have it. Don't tip. Just set them on a cloth. 